to be a little bit more successful, you should use it as like an introduction app and not like a dating app. Introduce, meet in person as soon as possible because that's really the only way you're going to know if there's a connection. Like don't go back and forth forever because there's no point in wasting your time if there's not going to be an in-person connection. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Report Saturday edition. And I got my co-host. Uh, it's actually been a couple episodes since you've been on. I got my co-host, Miss Alex Johnson. Alex, welcome to the show. Thank you. How's it going? Uh, it's going really good. Uh, we got some ping pong going on as we speak <laughs> in the other room. I believe Andrea and Tommy are ripping it on the ping pong table. We haven't Andrea, played in a bit. An- it's about Andrea time. thinks she's the best in the office. <laughs> so I don't know. I might have to challenge her. We have not played in a long time. Yeah, I'm glad. We, we got to get it. Everyone who ever comes in, they're like, who's the best in here? I'm like, you know what? We used to play a lot when we first got in the office, yeah. like all the time. And then it's just been sitting there. So it's it's good that it's getting some use. It is good. For a <laughs> while, it was like just sitting there, like we would use it to store like stuff, like just extra materials or people that come in for the podcast. They, they always bring us gifts. And so it just sits on top of the ping pong table. But uh, I will say I was in here last weekend, uh, Saturday night for like an hour. And um, I had a little company, played a little ping pong. And, and now... Andrea's on the on the decks right now. She's yeah, on the tables. I think we did a little bit of like spring cleaning earlier. Mm-hmm. And so kind of like moved some stuff off. And so it's kind of like a fresh slate. Yeah. I'm really excited because uh, we got our yacht meetup starting up again. Yeah. Uh, when is the next one? It's May what? So the first one of the season is May 11th, Saturday. We're going to change the time a little bit and test it, test it out. So it'll be kind of like a later afternoon, early evening. Yeah. May 11th, Saturday, five to nine. I love it. May 11th, Saturday. 5 to 9 p.m. We're moving to the Saturday slot this year. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm actually excited for this 5 to 9 slot because it's like Saturday. You can still go out. F- people that want to go out on Friday night, they still have all day Saturday to do whatever they need to do. Um, and then come out, get a little sunshine, a little sunset, and uh, get the boat at 9. Still have time to, you know, go grab a dinner if you want afterwards. So I think it's a good slot. And uh, I think it's going to be a good pivot for us. And uh, for the folks that aren't aware, we host yacht meetups, um, you know, during this, the warm months. So we typically start in May. We go through September. Um, but we're actually considering uh, not pausing for the slow season this year or the winter season. And maybe we just keep them going year round. I mean, shoot, uh, I would love to go out on the, on the water in like November, December, like, yeah, a little Christmas yacht party. Why not? Yeah, we thought about it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah, welcome to feedback too, but I'm excited to get them going again. They were awesome last year. We can do some themes. We could do yep. like a Halloween theme for October. Yeah. We could do like holiday theme for Christmas in like December. Um, so yeah, why not? And you know, Champagne Dave is always, <laughs> always welcoming with us. He's always a great host. So yeah. where can the, the listeners, if they want to come out to this yacht meetup, where can they grab tickets? Yeah. So we actually just put it online. Um, we will have it in both our Summer's Capital link tree, so Summer's Capital on Instagram, and then uh, in yours as well, in Rich Summer's Instagram. Uh, if you're on our mailing list, we'll also be sending out several emails with the links. Um, so if you're not on our mailing list, you can go to summerscapital.com, join, and we'll keep you updated there. But um, yeah, both of our Instagrams, will have it on the top there, you could get your tickets. Yeah. And if you guys listen to the podcast, uh, you know, regardless of where you guys are in the country or the world, man, we'd love to host you guys out here in San Diego. We do have the, the beers and deals meetups, typically second Wednesday of every month. It's free rooftop. And then, uh, man, we'd love to host all y'all uh, at a yacht meetup. I'd love to meet all you guys and gals. So um, if you're thinking about coming to San Diego, you, you want to connect with us, come out to a meetup. We'd love to connect. Um, yeah. So anyways, uh, excited for that and uh, excited for this episode. You know, we don't talk a lot of dating. And, uh, you know, for me, I want to start doing more episodes with other stuff outside of real estate. So I really moving forward, I want to start doing maybe 30% real estate stuff and business. And then the other 70%, I really want to start bringing on guests from all walks of life. Um, we had Alex, Dr. Alex uh, Roher on, uh, mm-hmm. Dr. Botox. <laughs> uh, had him on. Um, that episode's going to go out Tuesday next week. And uh, excited for that. Had Lauren Fisher on. We're talking uh, female athletes and controversial topics within sports. Um, I really enjoy those conversations. So yeah. um, I'm actually looking forward to kind of doing a lot more, uh, bringing on a, a more variety of uh, guests from all different walks of life. So um, online dating, mm-hmm. you know, you're single, mm-hmm. you're a bachelorette. I'm a bachelor, I'm single. Online dating, is that the best way to go for someone that's single out there 
looking to genuinely meet someone? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a loaded question. I think it it can go both ways. I think people have a lot of different experiences. And like what I say, like I talk about this with my girlfriends a lot. And, you know, what I say is like, it just takes one. So like, it doesn't really have to be the majority, it just takes one. So it could be 99, you know, percent not great. And then, but I will say at the end of the day, I do think that it has gotten to a point where people are just on there to swipe and it's more of just like a game, it's entertainment. It's it's not, a lot of people I don't think are really serious about meeting up. Um, they just do it to pass the time. And um, I think I think it was for a bit, there was a period of time when people were actually a little bit more serious about meeting up and you had a little bit more luck. Maybe this is just my experience, I don't know, but it, it feels like it's just gotten to a point where it's just kind of there for, for entertainment purposes. And, um, you know, which is okay too, if that's what you're looking for. But uh, I think for the most part, the rate of like actually going out on that first date doesn't seem to be very high. People just like to, to chat, have a pen pal, I feel like. So you're saying uh, a lot of folks are down to chat mm -hmm. uh, on these online apps, but they're not actually wanting to take action and meet up on the first date. Yeah, I don't think there's really too much initiative. Yeah, there's not really a lot of usually initiative to like actually make a plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done the online dating in the past and I, I don't do it today. Mm -hmm. um, but in the past, I was always very direct. I don't have time to be sitting there ch chatting and I'd rather like actually go meet up with someone. Um, and so I'm like, you know, maybe like one or two back and forth. And it's like, hey, what are you doing Thursday night at 6 p.m.? Do you want to meet for a drink? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, yes or no. It's like if, it, if it's a if it's a no. OK, well, when are you free? let's try to make plans. And if it's like, Hey, I want to go back and forth. I'm like, I'm not interested yeah. in playing games. So I was always direct. Now, the main reason I don't do it now is because 80% of men are competing for the top 20% of women on mm -hmm. these dating apps. And so a high quality female on a dating app probably is getting swiped on 50 to a hundred times yeah. every single day. And so as a guy, it's like, I don't, yeah. don't want to, I don't need to compete with all that stuff. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so organically, I feel like a lot of men out there are all willing to swipe mm -hmm. and DM and all yeah. that sort of thing, but not a lot of guys are willing to put themselves out there and, um, you know, organically meet someone yeah. in person. Yeah. Right? I think a couple of things. Like, I think uh, my first thought is to be a little bit more successful, you should use it as like an introduction app, not like a dating app introduce meet in person as soon as possible because that's really the only way you're going to know if there's a connection like don't go back and forth forever talking because like the whole point is to meet up and see if you have a connection in person right and mm -hmm. like someone could be a really smooth talker or like good on the app and then like it just be a lot different in person or like vice versa someone might be like busy like not really you know charming or this and that over text but in person there might be a lot of good conversation and good chemistry. So I think that's a good piece of advice. Like I feel like I've heard is, you know, just use it as like getting intro introduced to meet in person as soon as possible, because there's no point in wasting your time if there's not going to be an in-person connection. What, what are your thoughts on, uh, and I heard Alex Hermosi say this when he was single before he met Layla, he did a lot of like online dating and uh -huh. he said what he would do as like a busy entrepreneur is he would right away instead of going straight to a date he would say hey do you have time for a quick 10 minute phone call mm -hmm. and so he would hop on like a facetime with him for 10 minutes yeah and he he said he knew right away within those 10 minutes if he wanted to go on a date with him or not and he said like you know four times out of five he would come to the determination that he didn't want to go on a date with them and they were not aligned yep and he would say those 10 minutes would save him a three-hour date yeah what are your thoughts on jumping on a quick FaceTime? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm here for it because I think it does save you a lot of time. I've had people ask that before. And at first, you're just kind of like, really? I mean, <laughs> it's a little bit annoying at first, but at the same time, it's it saves everyone time. And um, I think even just hearing someone's voice is nice, too, you know, and just kind of seeing if there's kind of that, uh, like that conversational piece. So, yeah, I mean, it, especially if you're busy, you don't want to get like ready after a long day at work or, you know you know, waste a day with, uh, you know, with something that's not going to be a fit. I think that it's, it's definitely beneficial. So. Yeah. I didn't do a whole lot of the FaceTime thing. Um, I typically would just go meet up for a drink 
I'm direct. So like, I mean, you know, there's, yeah. if I'm not aligned after one drink, like I'll just call it. I'm not going to go hang out with them for the entire evening and vice versa. Like, shoot, if a woman's not aligned with me, like I wouldn't want them to waste my time either. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I will say though, it, like I will not meet up with someone without at least seeing like their social media. Yeah. Cause I think you can tell a lot from that. And so if someone's like not on social or it's private and they're not willing to share and they're kind of being weird about mm -hmm. it, I'm like, okay, that's like, that's a red flag. Cause if they're not willing to share their social media, then like, what else are they hiding? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think too, um, I, I think it gives you a little bit more of like a sense of who someone is. Um, you know, you can like see if you have any mutual friends, you can, you know, see just besides their five, like most thought out photos, like you really get more of an idea of who they are, their personality, like what they're into. And, uh, you get more of a full picture. I mean, it's Instagram, so it's still a highlight reel, but a little bit more than just the, however many photos are online. But I will say like one thing too is I think with the online dating, I think I've had more luck like meeting people in person, um, either like friends first or I mean, we just we do so many social things that I feel like, you know, you're always meeting people and getting connected. So I do think I've had more luck that way. Um, I think if you're just swiping, there's just so many options at your fingertips. So if you meet someone in person, you have that connection, like there's more of a not like a loyalty, but you, you know, you're you just you have that connection built. If you're on the app, if like there's one little thing wrong, like maybe like you didn't like how they, you know, what they're wearing or like one thing they said, it's so quick to go back and be like, well, let's get the next best thing. Best thing. There has to be yes. someone perfect. Yes. There's just so many options. And that's exactly what I was alluding to um, earlier is like when you meet someone organically, they are a lot less likely to just like move on the second something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. People on the apps are... Uh, you know, essentially almost like quote unquote speed dating, if you would. Um, this, the second something goes wrong or the second they don't like something uh, or they don't like what you're wearing, maybe they're moving on to the next thing because there's so many options. Yeah. And, you know, like, like we said earlier, 80% of the men are swiping on the top 20% of women. So, um, you know, they're going to have a lot of attention. They're going to have a lot of options where when I meet someone organically, they have a little bit more patience. Mm -hmm. um, I know I'm not competing with all these people out there. And so for those reasons, I like the organic a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Now I'll say this, the apps are great depending on your situation. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you are moving to a brand new city and you don't know anyone and you don't have a social circle, I think the apps are great, mm -hmm. right? But if you've lived in a city and you have a, a social circle and you have an established um, community mm -hmm. and um, you have uh, a lot of options at your disposal, not options yeah. at your disposal, lack of better terms, you have a circle and you organically meet a lot of people because of your circle, mm -hmm. then the apps are probably not the best way to go. Yeah. Another another uh, way to frame this, if you're traveling and let's just say you're, you're abroad for a month, right? And you don't know anyone, I think the apps are great. Yeah, for sure. What are your thoughts? I, I think that's exactly right. I think if you're in a place where you have different circles of friends and you're going to meet people, um, I think that... That, you know, if you meet through mutual friends and you go on a date, I think you're more likely to like be open to a second date. I think there's going to be like less ghosting because you're going to mm. have people to answer to. If you go on one date and then ghost online, it's like, well, you have no mutual friends. Like you don't really have anyone to answer to. But if you're kind of a part of kind of the same groups, like there's just a little bit more. Um, I don't know. You just you put in a little bit more yeah. to it. And then also one thing that I think is cool is. Um, you know, if you go on a, a first date from online, it's like you both get ready, you're both there. It's like kind of like, you know, you both want to go, but it's a little bit more interview style. One thing I think is cool about meeting just organically in person is you're in like the same place at the same time. You both want to be there. You're both probably in a really good mood. You're seeing them for like really who they are, not like who, you know, you're just putting up on this interview. And so it's cool. It's like you're, you know, you're, I think you're more likely to mesh because you enjoy the same things. You're in the same place at the same time. So, uh, yeah, and you're both stoked to be there. I think it's just like a better energy and a better vibe all around. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think the best way to meet someone organically is is obviously introduce yourself. But really, like, I like to just act like I'm not hitting on them. And I don't I'm just like they could be anyone. I'm mm -hmm. just like casually saying hi like I would to a stranger. Uh, or a 75 year old lady that's walking <laughs> down the street, you know? Yeah. And so um, casual conversation, a um, little small talk, and then, hey, nice to connect. Um, we should connect sometime. Are you on social? I don't even get a phone number. I just say, hey, are you on social? Everyone's on social. 
Um, everyone has an Instagram. Yeah, Instagram, cool. Let's connect. Yeah. And then um, you're not putting them uh, on the spot to like go on a date with you or like give you the number. And now there's this weird expectation. Now you connect on social, you add them, they add you back, and then they get to kind of check you out. Yeah. Vice versa. And then you can set up the date in the DM and be like, hey, we should grab a drink sometime if you're open to it. Yeah. It's and then nonchalant. from there, you can kind of tell like if they're single or not or if they're seeing someone. But yeah. it's not like if if you're like, what's your number? Someone might be like, oh, I'm taken. But even just social media, you can kind of get a feel for like who they are. You know, start maybe doing some like fire responses on the stories. Go from there. Because if you ask a girl <laughs> like right, right a minute after meeting him at a coffee shop, like, hey, I'd love to take you on a date. What are your plans Friday night? That's it's a like, little intense. It's, that's intimidating, yeah. you know, and they don't even know who you are. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, they might have their guard up. But on the flip side, if you just connect on social, very nonchalant. Hey, we should connect sometime. Are you on social? Yeah, here's my Instagram. Cool. Great to meet you. Have a wonderful day. Yeah. And then a couple days later, you know, they have a chance to kind of check you out on social and vice versa. Hey, I'd love to grab a drink sometime if you're open to it. And that's their opportunity to say yes or no. If they say yes, then you know they're interested. Yep. If they say no, like it's not a big deal. It was yeah. nonchalant the way you asked anyways. Yeah, you know? exactly. I've never done this before, but I, <laughs> I do know guys that, uh, and actually one of our podcast guests um, that was on recently, it was uh, Alex, who was it? Alex Camacha. Yeah, he's one. But I do have guy friends that I know like from high school and stuff like that, that they've done this. But they will have like a virtual assistant set up their dates. Oh yeah, in I their, remember in the dating apps. Oh my god! And then I'll take it a step further. I know guys that like will actually for like Friday night. Uh -huh. I mean, this is really taking online dating to another level. But they will like set up not just one date on Friday night, but two dates, and they'll stagger them. So they'll set the first one at like seven, and then they'll set the next one at like eight o'clock. Oh my god! And gosh. so they'll go to the first one. And like, if it's good, then they'll go to the bathroom and cancel on the eight o'clock. Oh no. But if like the seven o'clock is not good, then they'll like bail after a drink and go to the eight o'clock. That's like taking it to another level. I've never Aww. done that before, but like, yeah. if uh, it's pretty intense, but guys do that. I'm sure, I'm I've sure there's girls, girls that do that, that too. They're really? like, oh, I don't want to waste my makeup or outfit or something like That's that. That's crazy. Or I've heard of girls, not, not really girls I know, but I've heard of people doing that, but I've heard of, um, like setting up, setting up something after, whether it's like maybe drinks with your friends or something to do so that if it does go bad, like you're not, you're like you're out, you're dressed up, you're ready to go. Like you still have something fun to do. So you still have like a good night. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard of that. I really haven't heard of like stacking dates like that. It just gets stressful for me. <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, but, totally. It's, I mean, it's a lot. You got to do what you got to do. It's a lot. And then, you know, there's, there's never like a feel good about having to cancel on someone, especially like after they've probably already gotten ready. Yeah, it's that's a pretty Friday close. Night, yeah. And you're like, hey, sorry, like something came up. I have to cancel 30 minutes before. It's kind of a dick move. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it wouldn't be fun. Um, But I don't know. So for me right now, I'm like, yeah, I'm single. Yeah. I've done the online having dating fun. thing in the past. Um, And now I'm just like, I'm not interested. Yeah. I feel like I, I meet um, enough high quality woman yeah. organically that I just don't right. need to do it. You know? I think at this point too, I mean, I think if you're social, I think if you're, you know, going out and I mean, you don't even have to be like going out. I mean, you could just do whatever you enjoy doing, like go to the driving range. If you like to golf or as long as you're like putting yourself out there, not just like sitting home. Mm -hmm. I think that like sometimes maybe the, I mean, everyone's on the apps these days, but I think that like maybe the people who, really do well or like maybe the people who are like way more quiet or don't go out at all or like have a hard time maybe like talking to people but I would say like if you can you know just go out be social like join a club or go to a meetup yeah <laughs> um yeah I think uh, you're going to be able to tell a lot more about someone in person than just like behind a screen so I got a question for you yep so as a as a woman um first date ideally yeah uh let's say you meet a guy organically or maybe it's on an app whatever um what is the ideal first date for you? As a busy real estate investor or entrepreneur, time is money and first impression is everything. Every day to make it easy on myself, I wear Built Basics clothing. Whether you're a girl or guy looking for workout gear, joggers, shirts, button downs, hats, or shoes, Built's got you covered. Super comfortable, tight in all the right places to make you look fresh and clean all the time. Visit BuiltBasics.com and use promo code SUMMERS20 to receive 20% off of your order. Again, that's BuiltBasics.com. That's B-Y-L-T Basics.com. Use promo code SUMMERS20 to receive 20% off of your order. Now back to the show. Like, do you want a guy to like go all out and plan this elaborate thing and nice dinner no. and all this stuff? Or do you want something casual like, hey, let's Drinks. just meet for coffee. Let's meet and go on a uh, on a walk or like, let's just meet for a drink. What yeah, do you I prefer? think like coffee or, or drinks. Um, 
Because if you don't know drinks, them. Drinks, all plural. Okay. Not or just a drink. drink. Yeah, drinks. maybe a drink. Okay. Maybe a drink. And then if it's good, drinks. And if it's not, just one. Yeah. But I think, you know, I think it's a big commitment to do like a full on like dinner or like this full elaborate thing. Like I would almost be a little bit weirded out by f- like a full like whole elaborate plan because if it doesn't go well, then like yeah. what are you going to do? But um, I think too, it's like you you don't want to be committed for that long if it doesn't go well. So I think like a drink is fine or if you have a plan, um, you know, if it goes well, then go to the next thing. But just to like, f- you know, up front commit for that long when you don't know someone you don't know how it's going to go so I wouldn't really uh I wouldn't really want that but I I think if it is going well to maybe be able to like go somewhere else later or after that I think that would be a fun option yeah I agree I I think if it's online you don't really know this person it's kind of like a blind date I think yeah let's meet for a drink or let's meet for coffee something where you know if it doesn't go well you can get out of there in 30 minutes um and there's no expectation for like a long date now, if you meet someone organically and you maybe you know them through a friend circle yeah. or whatever and you have a good feeling about it and it's like a Friday night and you're making plans, it's like I think that's okay to be like, hey, yeah. let's, let's do dinner and drinks. Yeah. I think that's perfectly fine. If you, if you kind of know them already. If you have a good gauge. Yeah. Um, I went to a concert once for a first date like long time ago. Wow. Well. Yeah, but it was kind of my idea. I wanted to go and it was someone I kind of knew. Or like we'd been following each other on Instagram and kind of had a few mutual yeah. friends and I'm like, I really wanted to go to this con. Yeah. That was pretty fun. That was a fun, that was a fun one. But it could, if I, like if there was no connection, it could have been bad or like really boring. True. Was there a second date? Yes. Okay. There was a few dates. It was a while ago. Okay. Okay. So you guys actually dated for a little bit. Um, we went on several dates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Question for you. If you are, uh, dating someone for like two or three months, because for me, you know, I want to probably date someone for like three months before I like make it official and make them my girlfriend. I think most people are, are in alignment with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but in those two or three months that you're like not official, but you're like dating, what do you call that? Do you call that, hey, I'm dating someone? Dating. Or do you, what do you call that? Because some people say when they say, hey, I'm dating someone, that means I have a girlfriend or I have a boyfriend. That's where I think it's tricky because I think it means something different to everyone. But I think if you're going out on dates, if you're, I think it's, I think if, if you're dating before you're exclusive, I think you say you're dating. And then after that, you say, that's my boyfriend. That's my girlfriend. What do you do? Okay. Let's just, I'll give you an example. Um, if, if I'm out, if I'm, I'm dating someone for like two or three months, but we're not official. Yeah. Right. And I, by the way, I would rather date someone for like at this stage of my life for like three months yeah. rather than going on all these like first dates Mm -hmm. um, because it's just like, that's exhausting to me. And I would rather like get to know someone on a deeper level, uh, dating someone for three months before you make a decision, if you're going to make it official, it allows you to like go on a couple of trips together, see how they travel, probably go through a couple of disagreements and kind of see how they navigate through that. And you're getting that person's best three months. So if it's not aligned after three months, it's probably not going to be aligned. That's going to be and the so, best of the whole, yeah, exactly. And it's more conducive. You get an automatic plus one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's more conducive with everything that I'm doing at this phase of my life. Being single and going on all these first dates, I'm like, dude, that's exhausting. And that's a big distraction towards everything that we're building here. So I just wanted to prelude with that. Yeah. Um, I would, if I'm dating someone for three months I and someone else asked me, like another female, hey, are you single? I would say I'm dating someone. Yeah. Yeah, I would just say I'm dating someone. Yeah, right now. so that's the yeah. same. You're now, dating. now, if someone asked me and I'm, and I'm committed, I would say, like, no. yeah, like, I have a girlfriend. Right. right? That's versus, after versus you have someone. the conversation. Yeah. And if I have a girlfriend and I'm committed, uh, I wouldn't just say, oh, I'm dating someone. I would say, yeah, I have a girlfriend. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yep. And and I think that, you know, there should be uh, clarity. If you're dating someone for three months and you want to make them your girlfriend, I think the guy should ask them, like, hey, will you be my girlfriend? Yeah. Or, hey, I've had such a good time with you. I really enjoy your company. These last three months have been amazing. Will you be my girlfriend? Yeah. And make it official. So that way there's no loose ends and there's no like uncertainty on on the other end too. What are your thoughts? No, I agree. I think that's a good way to look at it. I think you have good experience. I think certain people are just so casual these days that like, it's like, oh, do you just want to hang out? Or do you want to just, uh, do you want to connect? Yeah. Like it's like, Netflix. I don't know. Like, are you going to take me on a date? Like there's not. I mean, Mm -hmm. there is, there is that obviously, I I know you go on on a lot of dates and a lot of people do, but I think there is a lot of just people like, Hey, you want to hang out? Like, it's almost like they don't want to put themselves out there and like ask you on a date. I don't know if it's, they don't want to get rejected or, or what it is, or maybe they just kind of want to play it cool. But there's like a lot of like, Oh, let's just hang out. Or there's a lot of uh, people that, especially in San Diego, I think there's a lot of guys that 
don't date intentionally mm-hmm. and, and woman too. And that's, yeah. okay, that's okay. I think as long as you're transparent about it, right? Yeah. So, you know, let's, I'll give you an example. If you're going on a first date as a guy and you know, this woman is, you know, intentionally trying to meet a partner yeah. and she wants to, you know, move to a different phase of her life. And that is not your intention at all. And you just want to go on a bunch of dates and mm-hmm. bang all these girls. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Do that. But you need to be transparent about it and don't, don't lead someone on in order to, in order to get what you want to get, yeah. Uh, if it's going to be at that person's expense, yeah, or disposal, I agree, right? Yeah. So I think it's okay to be transparent, and if the if the woman wants that too, then that's really fine. And there's plenty of women in San Diego and all these other cities around the country mm-hmm. that are okay with that too. Yeah. You know, I agree. Yeah, I think just be upfront with what you want. I mean, you could be, you could want a relationship, you could not, you could just want to like have fun. Mm-hmm. That's totally fine. Just be honest about it, and then you'll find someone that wants that too, or. Uh, at least you're not leading someone on. I think that's good. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, this, this is for women out there too, but uh, definitely for guys, like if you are looking to genuinely meet someone, like don't tell that person on the first date, like I'm looking to like get married and I want to have kids. And, yeah. Like, don't tell them about like exactly what you're looking for. It's like, it can kind come of, off it's really off-putting intense. Yeah. And it, it comes off very desperate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would shy away from that on the first couple of dates. Like just have a good time, see if there's a connection, be organic, have fun. If the person asks what you're looking for, like, you know, be transparent, but like, don't go There's overboard with it. There's a way to say it without like Elegantly. scaring someone off. Yeah. Yes, exactly. I remember one time I was on a first date and this guy was like, he was so, he was so intense and he was really, really nice, but just like very, very intense. And he was like telling me, he's like, yeah, I just bought this house and this certain zip code because it has like really good school districts for like future kids. It's not, I'm like, whoa oh, like, are you, you're single, right? And I'm like, <laughs> I guess that's good to be thinking about that. But like the way he said it, it just like really scared me. This was several years ago. And I'm like, I guess it's sweet. I kind of feel bad saying it, but it was just a little bit much for me. He's going to find the right person. Maybe he already has. Someone's going to love that. But it's just, I don't know. It's just a lot the way he said it, like on the first date. I think. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. That's pretty. I agree with that. <laughs> um, I had a woman uh, not too long ago. I'm kind of like hooking up a little bit. And like, she's like, she's telling me like, Hey, I need to tell you something important. And this mm-hmm. is like second date type of thing. And oh, she's okay. like, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Like, yeah. this is kind of weird. Right. And I'm like already going into it. Like, okay, well, what do you need to talk to me about? And she's like, Hey, like, I need to let you know now I will not sleep with you unless you're my boyfriend. I'm like on the second date, like that's yeah. pretty heavy. Right. Yeah, so don't like, do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like, whoa, you know, so it's just, in- it's intense. Like, and there's a way to say it. Like if she did want to say that or get it across, like that's fine. But I think like the more serious and intense you are about it, like there's just, there's different ways to get the same thing across. Yeah. And so it, 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 it comes off as like, okay, like you need me to lock this up right now right. on the second date. I'm like, I, I need to like, I want to like, just let this organically go and unfold how it's supposed to unfold. Yeah. Let's have a good time with no expectations. And, you know, two, three months in, if we're having a great time and it's both a line, it's both a fit for us, then let's make it official. Right. But to like drop that on like the you second date, I'm like, yet. yo, yeah. that's a lot, yeah. you know? I don't so, know. Um, I don't know. I always think that like easygoing, fun, but intentional, there's like yeah. a balance is like the way to go. Yeah. You know? I agree. So, you know, people ask me, like, oh, what, what are you looking for? I'm like, you know, at this phase of my life, I'm, I'm ready to meet someone. Mm-hmm. However, um, I'm very comfortable with everything that I'm doing. And, like, I'm busy with all this other stuff and I'm growing a thing. Yeah. And, like, I need to be selective with who I date. Yeah. Right? So I'm ready to meet someone. But at the same token, like, I'm going to be selective and I'm okay with what I'm doing. And, like, I'm yeah. okay waiting till I meet that right person. Yeah. You know? I think you get to a certain point where it's just like you have to like do everything that like you want to do and get yourself in a spot where like you're fine. And then I think it's just it's it's just going to be like a bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be like, oh, I I need this or uh, like this is going to like complete me or whatever. Like you're fine. And then it's like, oh, it's just kind of like the cherry on top. Like it's going to like add to your life. But then you kind of have your both like your separate lives, too. You know, I get another question for you. Do you ever come across guys that don't pay on the first or second date? Yes. Really? Yeah. What percentage would you say? A lot of them do. At least a lot of the guys that I've I've gone out with, um, I'll usually offer to like split it. Um, some guys have taken me up on it. <laughs> on the first date? Yeah. Whoa. And that's so crazy. I just, I mean, I do it to be nice. I never want to assume. And I know people have like very different opinions on it. And so I just want to be like, I want to offer that. Yeah. First of all, that's a, that's a very respectful gesture on your part. Yeah. And that's, I think that's great. I think all women should be like a nice gesture. Like, Hey, like, you know, or at least say thank you so much. Right. 
Um, but you offering to split the tab on a first day, I think it's a very nice gesture. A lot of times and, they'll but say for no. A guy to, for a guy to say, yeah, yeah okay, yeah. put your card up? Yeah. Dude, that's yeah. crazy. And so what, what, do you, what goes through your mind when that happens? When they're like, yeah, let's do it. I'm just kind of like, okay, it's kind of like a note in his file. Like you obviously, for me, it's like I... I feel appreciated or it's just, it's like not really sexy to be like, okay, like let's split this down the middle. Yeah. If anything, what I think it's is. It's almost like embarrassing, like at a restaurant, like the yeah. server, people are around like, oh, like let's split the bill and on, on like a date. It's kind of like embarrassing. In my opinion, it's, un it's uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Or like I've had, you know, like I'll offer and then someone will be like, they'll be like, no, I, you know, I, I invited you. So like, it's on me. And then, you know, if we like go somewhere else for a drink or whatever, then like I'll offer to like pick that up mm -hmm. just because it's like even just. Um, trading off or it's just it's way better than like splitting things down the mid middle there's just something yeah. like very transactional about that <laughs> like, it is it's not... <laughs> it is yeah um i'll usually say like if a woman like is like oh let me get this or like let me, let's split it i'll just say like i'll be like no no for for real like let, let me be a gentleman yeah and, yeah and that's it you yeah. know and it, it's it's truly really how i feel like i just it's a gentleman gesture but like i want to feel like a gentleman yeah. so let me pick it up you know but what percentage would you say of men you know, allow you to split the bill on the first date or maybe they don't even pay on the first date or second date. No, that's, that hasn't happened to me. I've had, I've had friends that's happened to and it's not ended well, but like I've, I've split not, I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe like 10%. It... Samantha, this is it happened to Samantha? <laughs> Shout out Samantha no. if you're listening. Um, I don't know how them Boston dudes do it versus the, the SD. <laughs> Yeah, no, she, I think she's the same. She has the same outlook as me. Like she'll offer. Um, I think that's kind of the, the consensus. I just don't want to assume I, or I don't want to just come across like presumptuous or like rude. Um, but I don't know. I think I, I offer and I appreciate when um, they uh, respectfully decline my offer. Mm. So I uh, open the car door for yeah. like woman, like mm -hmm. if we're getting into my car or we're getting into a, an SUV, I always open the door. Mm -hmm. um, and most women tell me like, oh my God, like I'm not used to this. Yeah. Is that is that something that's a lot of guys um, don't do? A lot of guys don't seem to do that, I wouldn't say. Really? Uh-huh. I feel I, like it, everything's just a lot more casual. It sounds like such a basic thing. Yeah. I, I don't have it happen a lot. How many dates, how many dates should a guy pay the bill for at least first three, minimum first three? Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Like, if you're, sure, like, if you're going to dinner, like, I don't know, like, if you're going to a baseball game, for example, it's like, maybe he, like, he buys the tickets, like, maybe I'll be like, I'll go grab a drink, you mm -hmm. know, and then like, I'll pay. I, I won't be, like, going and be like, let me have your card. I'm going to go get a drink. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I would just, that's just me. I know everyone's different, though. I would, like, I would prefer to have, um, you know, a little bit more, like, back and forth. Like, I would offer to... Um, to pay for for some, I guess it depends on what you're doing. Yeah, I've actually like dated girls in the past that like they, you know, I, I'm very generous and and I I definitely like to be able to pay. Um, but a thank you goes a long way. Yeah, and I've dated girls in the past to where like uh, I've had to have a conversation with them like you know a month in and be like, hey, like I love taking you out and I love taking care of you. I love going to like nice dinners and stuff like that. But like a thank you would would go a long way, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I didn't realize it." Right? Yeah. But just like manners like that, you'd be surprised. Some some women don't. Another question for you. Okay. I think I actually was thinking about this the other day, and I was talking to some some lady friends of mine. And I was like, "This is kind of crazy to think about," but I would say, and this is just me shooting from the hip. I'm totally speculating, and I'm willing to be wrong here. But I would say that 90% of women um, that are in the dating scene in San Diego, they don't they don't know how to cook, and they don't cook. <laughs> What what are your what are your thoughts behind that? I hmm, let's see. They don't know how to cook or they just don't? They just don't cook. Like out of the last four girls I dated, and I dated all of them for like two to three months, mm -hmm. only one of those four girls actually like cooked and she only cooked like two times. Three of three of the four never never offered to cook one time over th three months of dating. That's pretty crazy, right? Maybe it's like an age thing. I don't know. Maybe it's like if if oh, for sure. It's they're younger. Thing. Our maybe parents' they're generation. Not. Yeah. Woman, woman know how to cook. Yeah. That's like a that's a common thing. I, yeah, it's it's probably just becoming less and less common. Um, just they don't they don't have to. They don't they don't have to. They just um, they don't. And I mean, especially if it's like the girls. They don't know how. Maybe and they just order Uber Eats all the time. But I cook for myself, so like 
you know, I cook my just like very basic things, but I think it would be nice, like not on a first date, you know, you're not going to cook for someone on first date, but I think, you know, especially a couple months in, I think it's nice. I think it's like a nice gesture. Um, it shows, it's like something you can like put your like, time and energy into like, an, or you could kind of like do it together. So if you were dating a, a guy for like, let's just say like two months, mm -hmm. at what point, or let's just say three months, at what point in those three months would you say, Hey, and let's just assume you're hanging out five or six nights a week. Um, at what point would you say, Hey, like, let me cook dinner tonight. If you're hanging out five or six nights a week. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, like definitely probably with in the first month. I just, I wow. don't. I, you're well, you're an anomaly. But five or Alex. six times a week is a lot. So probably like within the first couple of months, just because you, you know, you want to have like a night in, you don't necessarily like want to be eating out all the time. Maybe like two months in. Yeah. It'll be fun. Like, let's just like get a bottle of wine. Let's like have a movie night. Let's like all cook dinner. I agree. Um, I think it's kind of fun. I agree. But I, you'd be surprised. I think most women, they're like, rather than cooking, they better just do takeout. If you're going to mm -hmm. have like a night in and just have a relaxing night, which I think is great. But I think um, a lot of women these days would prefer just, oh, let's just do takeout. It's easier. It's yeah. more convenient. There's something like just kind of putting your kind of effort and time and energy into it. Like, I think it's like, you know, you kind of put like your care into it. And um, it's just a little bit more heartfelt, I think, than mm -hmm. like ordering takeout. Yeah. This this conversation actually came up recently because a couple a couple girls were at my place and they're like, man, you have such a great kitchen. Yeah, especially like, in your place, your kitchen. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, no one's ever cooked in this kitchen. <laughs> I got all the utensils, I got yeah. the pots and pans, and they're like, no one's ever cooked in this kitchen. I'm like, well, I don't cook. Yeah. And no girl has ever like offered to cook in my place. That's crazy, especially with that kitchen. Like, yeah, it's, it's never been cooked in. Oh my gosh. Only That's take crazy. only takeout. Oh my gosh. I don't even have anything in the fridge. <laughs> So, well, I, I have some, I have protein shakes, a little bit of wine, <laughs> maybe some leftovers every now and then, but that's it. So, I don't know. Do you have any questions? Um, Th those are some of my questions. Gosh. We covered a lot. I feel like we talked about a lot. I feel like it's something that, like, I don't know, we talk about, think about a lot, but I feel like we've kind of covered it. I guess the only other thing is, uh, I mean, what's your go-to first date? You asked me mine. What do you prefer? You prefer just, like, drink something quick or... Um, for, drink? Me, for me, it depends. So if it's like, you know, I don't know this person, yeah, very casual, I'll be like, hey, let's just meet for a drink. And then and then typically I'll meet him for a drink. And if it goes well, we're connecting, then I'll 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 go to another spot. You kind of have like a, a plan in case you want to continue yeah, it. Yeah, we'll go to another spot. I'll be like, hey, like, are you let's go grab a bite. And then we'll go to another spot, grab a bite. Um, but I like to move around. So rather than just staying in the same spot for like two or three hours, um, I like to go have a drink in our neighborhood. So conducive for it, yeah. you know, here in Little Italy, um, there's like 30, 40 spots. You can like, grab a drink and a bite and they're all cool ambiances. So for me, I'd rather, like, rather grab a drink, no more than two. Yeah. And then, hey, let's go grab something else here. And then we'll go to another spot. If it's really good, we'll keep progressing the night. Yeah. And change so up the it builds trust. Mm -hmm. um, it allows the, the woman to get to know you better and vice versa versus just sitting in the same spot with the same ambiance with the same server. Um, it allows you to actually like go and, uh, conversate with different servers and yeah. like you know you get to walk to a new spot together or maybe you jump in a, an SUV and go to another spot so it almost feels like you're going on like three or four dates all in the yeah. same time frame versus like just one um and so I like to do that if it's going well if it's not going well I'll just do one and then kind of you know roll out yeah yeah I like that that's it well hey this is fun <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. I, I enjoy talking dating. The only other time I, I got to talk dating on a podcast was um, with Michael Sartain out in Vegas. That's true. Uh, I want to say that was episode 100, actually, of this podcast. So don't uh, listen to if it, you, you like this to. conversation, <laughs> go check out episode 100 with Michael Sartain. Uh, and uh, we'll have to do this again soon. Yeah, it was fun. She's Alex Johnson. I'm Rich Summers. Listeners, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Peace.